Hi, it's Kathleen. Um, I'm going to try to walk through this because I can't get the screen capture to open up all the windows. But here is the more slower paced version of the introduction to Inkscape. So here you can see that I've got a um, I've got a sheet. You can change this size by pressing File, which is up here. You can't see this window pop up, but it you can just go down to Document Properties. You can also press Shift Control D. Uh, again, the window's not popping up, but you'll see my mouse move around, pretend it's there. Um, there's a page size you can change. It's usually uh, defaults to A4 or US legal, uh, I'm sorry, US letter size. Or right below that, it says custom size. You can change the size and change the units. You can also add it to the upper right hand corner, change the display units. So I have it in inches right now, but you can change it to millimeters, pixels, centimeters, etc. And if you don't want any page border, you can uh, go all the way to the bottom and there's a show page border, you uncheck that. Uh, but the thing is, if you want to save um, a print or save a PDF, it will only do the things in the bound of this page. So if you have a small page, it only put the, the elements there. You can have to ship things over and save each page separately as a PDF if you want a PDF done. That being said, let's start off with the most important two uh, elements. Here's a select and transform, and here's the one for uh, modifying pass by notes. Now you notice that down here on the very bottom, it says no object is selected because we haven't selected any objects. I do have one half of a front of a bodice I've made. So let's see how that looks. Um, so you click on it or you can click and drag. You have to click and drag the entire piece for it to happen. If there's multiple pieces, you only do part of it. Unlike an illustrator, it will only uh, select the piece that's completely encompassed. Uh, illustrator, it will do uh, anything you touch, basically. So if you want to scale it up, which I do not recommend because that is not an appropriate way to size pieces, just to let you know, you can either do it completely here, which does not do it to scale. It does whatever way you happen to move the width and the height. Control Z to undo. Or I think you can right click and press undo. If you press control and click and drag, it'll do it in a uh, more organized fashion. I'm gonna undo that because I don't wanna mess up the proportions. But again, if you are trying to do this to size patterns, please don't. <laughs> That's not an appropriate way to grade patterns. It's gonna be all messed up. Um, but let's go on to the more exciting thing. This node, you see when I click on it, it turns red and it has this little very narrow arrow, narrow and long arrow. Um, you can select the node points here. So say you wanted to change the neckline, you could do that. You could select this and move it up yourself. If you wanted to stay on the line, uh, like that's you sneeze or something, press Control Z to undo it. Press Shift and uh, sorry, Control, and I'll keep it on that line. So Control Z. You can even make uh, curves. So say you want this to be a little curvier. Go ahead and pull that down. Okay. So here you notice how I'm doing it. And it's going, it's snapping there, and it's making me mad. Uh, you can either zoom in closer so your pixels are a little bit further away from each other, and pull down, or to the right is the snapping. If you turn this off, it turns off all the snapping. So I've only have a few that are highlighted, which are the blue. So here's to bounding boxes, which you know when you click on it, you see this dash line, that's a bounding box. Um, there's, I think, corners, uh, other things. Um, to the nodes, that's those little dots, or not, not really dots, diamonds. Um, and then you can have paths or intersections. I don't have any intersections in this case because it is a pattern. And two other points such as centers. This is important when you want to move the center and rotate it. Okay, so say we want to change this neckline. You can click here or double click and then move this down. You can also use the arrows to move it down or to the right. It does it, I believe, one pixel um, from each other. Okay, so this is a different than the uber fast version because I'm showing you all these in a more methodological way. This is not in the uber fast, but I pressed the wrong button again. Oh, here we go. So say um, I move this over and I want this to be aligned. Well, I could do it 
my eye, which is not the most accurate. You can see it's slightly off here, especially if I zoom in. I'm pressing control and scrolling up to zoom in. You can zoom out by control and scroll down, or you can do to the right. Um, the thing is, is that this will scroll in where your mouse is pointing if you use that scroll button. It's very nice. If you want to move to the left or right, press shift, and you can scroll left to right. And then, of course, up and down is just regular scroll. So if I want this to be more accurate, because you can see I was deviating from this line, I can click here and press shift and click here, or use the marquee and click both. And you see this fill in stroke button, I, since there's, no, not fill in stroke, I am sorry, align and distribute, which is con, shift control A. These come up. So this aligns the nodes. This aligns the node horizontally along the horizon or vertically, or you can space them apart. So the most important would be these two. So I wanna see how it bumps over. I'm gonna click that. And you can change where it's relative to. So this is the last selected one. So if I clicked this one last, then it'll move this one over to the left. So to make it a little bit more dramatic, if I click point A and point B, it's going to align to the last selected, which is point B. But if I say first selected and I click point A and point B, guess what's going to happen? Point B is going to move. I'm just control Z to undo everything. Okay. So that's the basics for aligning and uh, moving your notes. Now, what is a note? Well, uh, your most powerful tool to draw things is going to be this bezier or bezier pen. So that's a click. It drops down an anchor, and then it drops another anchor. These are all lines. You can, of course, trace. Um, let's see. For example, since I have node snapping here, you could trace around here. But let's go ahead and just draw a shape to show you the basics. It's like dropping an anchor, uh, you know, a pin, and then you have a string attached to it, and you just make it taut. The great thing about Bezier curves, though, is if you hold and drag, click and drag, you can make a curve. Uh, well, what do you do with this thing? I don't want that. Maybe you do, but I don't want that. So you just press enter and then um, hover over the last point and you can see where it's turned red. So I think if you turn this off, it will turn red, but it won't snap very nicely. It doesn't matter. It appears to work either way. And we can continue our own merry away. Good Lord. Yeah, making a B. Um, so if you're done and you don't want it closed, you just press enter and you're done. And you can click on the regular arrow so you can move it around by clicking and dragging as normal. You should be used to this. But if you want to continue this on and close the loop, you have to click between these. So some people might have the Inkscape already automatically uh, set to show up like this, for example, and you might not want this filled in. Well, that's pretty easy. You just press this X. Now you might have to scroll over. Just press this X. Or if that's not floating your boat, you can click the fill and stroke and change the fill to X for no paint. Uh, if you click paint, you can change the colors. You need to have a custom fill, but um, let's not get too complicated here. Uh, same thing for the stroke. The only difference is if you want to change the stroke down here, you have to press shift and then press the button. It's not immediately evident because this is quite thin. If you want to change the thickness, you can go here. Uh, there's other options, but this is how I do it. So let's go with like say, five points just so it shows up nicely. So you can see how the color drastically changes. Now, now that we've made a shape, um, let's do some manipulation with it. So you can see, as I've already shown, you can change the width, the height, or you can do it up here where it says W is width. I have it set to inches. If you click on this arrow button, and I sincerely hope this shows up in the video, you can change it to different sizes. So maybe I want the width to only be 11 inches and the height to be um, 10.5. It'll automatically do it once you press enter. Uh, the X and Y coordinates are the lower left hand corner where they are relative to the start and origin, which is usually the very bottom left hand corner of your page. If you don't have it displayed, you're going to have to look at these, um, these rulers. 
so you can move it around manually. This is uh, very useful if you're pattern drafting. Uh, not, not so useful if you're just trying to do some grading or reflecting. So let's do more manipulation. So say I want to rotate this. You can click this once and it rotates. You can do that by grabbing here. If you want it to rotate in a organized fashion instead of freely, so for example, you want to do it 90 degrees, you press control and it will snap to, I believe, every 10 degrees. Um, somebody check that for me, please. Or say you want to, um, I'm just going to copy this by pressing control C and then control V where it will paste wherever your arrow is. If you wanted to reflect it, you could press H. It does a horizontal, along the horizontal plane, right? And then V, which does vertical plane. And my four-year-old's popping around at 9.45 at night. You should be to bed. But you can see where they're reflections of each other. If not, you can click on the object and go to object. And I know you can't see this, but uh, there should be a rotate clockwise, 90 degrees clockwise or counter, counterclockwise at CW or CCW. Um, it will both work quite beautifully. So, um, continuing on, here is a very powerful tool that you should know. There's also a way to do an illustrator, but you can, this, this uh, crosshatch is the rotation center. So, if, for example, you want to expand like flash and spread, you can move this over to the corner and then we'll rotate around that place. Also very useful. If, for example, you want the centers to be um, centered over, right? If you have the snap to center on, which I do not. Let me just demonstrate that for you. Oh boy, somebody is like an elephant. So you can see where the two um, rotational centers are snapped. So you just found another trick. If you double click on the, um, let me try to back this out. Oh, junk. I keep pressing the wrong button. Um, if you double click on here, it makes it into the node transformer. So let's get back to that. If you click on a node, you can move it by clicking and holding. Same thing with here. Now, you will see a slight difference when I click on this portion because it's curved. You see how it has this little uh, leg? This does, the curve is going to um, be tangential to this and you can control the diameter of the curve. So if it goes in here, it's going to concave, con convex, yes. However, this only has one side. So if I want to change it where both sides are curved, I would come up here and make it smooth. The best thing about um, Inkscape really is you can just go ahead and grab that line and move it. Can't do this on Illustrator. And now you see there's two, it, they're called handles. I should call them handles instead of legs, but you can independently change the diameter. But in this case, because they're smooth, they move um, opposite of each other. If you wanted them to move independently of each other, you'd have to change it to a corner, which is up here. And now it's going to be a rotated. It's a square, but it's not the same. I don't know. It's, not, it's filled in or something. All right. So now you can say I can do this independently. Now, if you wanted to get rid of a point, like you said, oh, no, I made a horrible mistake. I do not want that. There, you press delete and it's gone. Uh, if you didn't want to do that, control Z. Again, I'm hammering that home because that's super important. I don't know what the Mac version is. I'm sorry. So that's, that's pretty much the most useful uh, manipulation for a path. So the reason it's called a path is because it's got nodes mm -hmm. that you can move and has the line that's connected to nodes, so either as a curve or a straight line. Objects, on the other hand, are, for example, this rectangle, square. This square is a special type of rectangle. Notice when I click on this, it's only got one, two nodes, and then I don't know what the heck that is. Oh, sorry, that's a, that changes the um, cur curving. Yes. But you see, even if you don't know what it is, you, you can try it and then just press Control Z and it'll undo it. No big deal. Don't be afraid. So um, going on to objects, if you want to make shapes or basic shapes, so there's rectangles with squares, circles, and then you have polygons, which you can specify up here how many corners it has, or, uh, or uh, stars, but a three-corner star is just going to be a triangle. You need like 
five to be it before. All of this stuff just rounds it out. So if you mess it up, just make sure that this is all like zero. Uh, so when you make shapes, you can click and drag. You can also specify the width and the height and the relative position, which um, right now it's not, specifi it's not specified until you actually click out of it. So say I wanted this to be perfectly square, I would do six inches by six inches, right? But you can also lock the ratio. So if you only type, if you want it nine inches, it'll lock the ratio and everything could be nine inches by clicking this lock button. You don't want it locked, unlock it. There's kind of a lot of options to do this. It almost runs like a drafting program. Um, I've done AutoCAD and SolidWorks similarly, and it behaves in a similar way. It just can't do as much as powerful things. So if you want it to be even and you just want to freehand it, you can press control and drag and it will do it uh, evenly. Very useful when you're making circles, like so. Okay. So next let's talk about alignment because uh, sometimes it's a pain in the butt. So if you have a reflected piece like this, you want it to, it's cut on fold. And I believe Marta has a very good tutorial to do this, but I'm gonna cover it anyway. We want to, ref I copied it by Control C, it's the same thing as any Windows program, and then Control V, which is paste, I don't know why. <laughs> Let's start with a P, because Control P is taken by print. Anyway, uh, I'm going to reflect this by pressing B. Oh, no, H. So like I said already, I keep getting confused. Just try one and then try the other one. It's fine. Control Z between if you like. But you can see how these two um, are snapping together. Uh, but if you didn't have the snap on and say you wanted these aligned, like so you need that and you needed a panel in between for some reason. Let me make this a bit more dramatic here. So remember that uh, align and distribute here? I'm just clicking on it to get it to pop up. Now I have mute more options besides distribute. So I have to click on both and I, it's relative to page now. So it's gonna be relative to this outline, the big A0 outline. Let's, I'm gonna change it to last selected. You can see this red line shows where it's aligning. So perhaps I want them to both be aligned to the bottom. Now they're aligned, rather than trying to eyeball it or taking the X, Y coordinates and doing all that stuff. It's so much faster. You can do something similar with um, having the center lines aligned. Uh, distributing spaces is particularly useful if you're trying to figure out where to put your buttons. I'm going to show this to you because I am absolutely in love with it. Okay, say we have four buttons. I know nobody actually have buttons this stupid big. Well, they're all generated. I just copied and pasted. I just pasted four times. Control V will continue to paste it where the, the arrow, the my mouse is. So I want these all to be aligned. I can do this one or this one or this one. They will all work exactly the same. So center. I don't I don't know what I did wrong. Okay. Let's try this one more time. Please listen to me this time. All right. Sometimes it does not want to listen. Okay. There we go. It's doing last selected, so it's just doing to the last one. Um, but uh, let's make this a little more dramatic. So if you press Control and move, it'll stay on the same line. Okay. So you can see how these are distributed along the length. Uh, but they're not very even, so you can futz with it. You know, you can click on it and move it up and down with the arrow key, but uh, sometimes that's not as accurate. Or you can click on all four, and then you see this. It says distribute either by the centers equidistantly, or from the tops, bottoms, or um, between objects. These are all the same size, so you can use any of them. They should technically work correctly. But there, that automatically spaces them all out. You just need to know the beginning and end. Very useful if you have a whole bunch of these. And then, um, so now we have this group of button holes that we want to indicate. I know this is not the proper symbol for button holes, just bear with me. Uh, what if you don't want to move these all over the place all the time? Or you want to make them all 
scaled in size. Well, you can just highlight all of them by doing the marquee around and then moving them. Remember, I press control so that the ratio is the same. Or you can go um, press control G, which groups them, or you can go up here to object. And I know you can't see this, but you press group. And now it goes together. Um, you just have to click on any one of them. Now, if you want to ungroup these and individually move them, or you need to add something on, for example, you can press shift control G and it'll ungroup them. And now you have four individual boxes. Um, so now let's get to uh, slightly more useful things for when you're cutting on, on the fold, or you need to do some type of um, changes to say the neckline. And you don't want to necessarily um, move all of those data points. So, because sometimes you could have, I'm sorry, my baby's crying. Sometimes you could have a whole bunch here because it might be complicated, for example. I'm going to show you how to use the path functions, which will not show up, but there's shortcuts. And I, I think I've written them down in my little shortcut guide. So say I wanted to change this V into a very funky curved. I'm going to fill this in just so it's easy to see the difference. Yeah. Totally ugly colors, I'm sorry. This is the one in front, right? Because it's covering up everything else. We have to select both. So control, I press shift and I press click the other one, or like I said, you can highlight everything. And then I'm just gonna do it my way, which is shift and then pressing, clicking on what I need. You can go to object, uh, path and union or press control plus. Oh, I'm sorry, that's that's the wrong way. You want to delete it. <laughs> control minus, which is object. Again, why not object? Path, path, go to path, because it's a path, and do difference. Those are pretty much the basic ones you want. Now you have a funky looking, um, a funky looking neckline. This is useful if you need to create facing. This is kind of a trick that, uh, Kind of a pattern drafters trick. So if you need to make facing, for example, oh, sorry, went the wrong way. Go this way because you're going to cut out all this junk, right? All right. Let's say you want facing for this, I'm giving away all the secrets. You control minus, and now boom, you have facing, perfectly fitted for my very funky looking shape. So that's, that's it for the manipulation on pretty much what you'll need. Um, you can also do this if you want to have a single piece layer. Show you vertical, no, horizontal. Yeah. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna delete this, you just press delete. So because I have it snapped, they should snap theoretically. See, look, this is not perfectly square. I did a bad job, but let's pretend it is. So we're gonna, we need this and this to be highlighted and you can press control plus. Mm, it needs to have a slight overlap. And so I'm just pressing the right button for a little bit. So it's just one pixel difference, control plus. Oh, I need to press control plus. So you can see how it's filled in and there's that little thing where it wasn't exactly, uh, exactly flat. That was my mistake. Uh, ruler part can tell you how many inches it is and what angle it is. It's very useful. So now that we have this beautiful masterpiece and you want to export it, I've got to move it so that it's over the page because again, it won't print the PDF. We can do file, save as. I'm so sorry, he's so grumpy and I am isolation so I can't go pick up my baby. That's done, It's it has saved. Um, So you want to know about layers, that's here. Or you can open up the layers panel, which is uh, up here, this is layer. You can add layers, you can open um, the layers panel, which I hope shows up here. Uh, you can add on by pressing the plus, you can minus by deleting. Um, it's gonna open a window that says, do you want it, what do you want to name it and where do you want to put it? So I'm just gonna lay, layer two and say above the current. 
So this is when you can do different sizes. So for example, this, I want to be on layer two, I will control copy on layer one, press layer two and control V. So if I hide layer one, everything is only gonna be showing up as layer two. I'll make this a different color so it's easier to see. So say, and this is incredibly not appropriate, this is not how you uh, grade or resize, so please don't actually do this. So say I want a slightly different size, right? I'm gonna make both of these see-through and I'm gonna change this to red. Right. So you can see how they're nested, but if I turn off layer one, it goes away and only layer two remains. Oh my goodness, somebody is super mad. I don't know if you can hear this, but he's super mad. Um, so that's how you usually get the different size layers when you print it as a PDF. So the thing is, is that when you import a PDF into here, it does not separate onto layers. It's kind of a pain in the butt. So let's get into importing things. So say you want to import an image. I saw somebody do a really cool thing. Uh, she just posted it today where she took a picture of her layout for her crystal design for her bodice. And she did half of it and she just uh, did the image flip so that she could do the other half. But say you want to import an image. Oh, good Lord, I have it set on the wrong thing. I'm just going to import this image. Let's say, OK, this is a JPEG. So this is this is going to be uh, kind of <sighs> in layer one. So if I wanted to move it to layer two, you can right click. And I don't know if this window is showing up, but you right click and there's a move to layer. And it will pop up a window that says which layer. And you click on the layer and say move. So now you can see where um, it's on the top of everything. Before, this red one was on top of it. Uh, but now this is on top of everything because it's on layer one, layer two. So I'm going to just delete that. Just think of layers as sheets of paper. Like, you know, when you have transparent sheets and you put them all together or, or cells, like for animation, you can build layers. And from the top down, everything that's blocking something else you won't see. Whatever's on that layer will be all together. Uh, so if you want to move this down, you just press page down. Page down if I press the right button. Um, now you can see this will be above. If this is colored in, it's a little bit more illustrative. So if I want this to go, I have to click on it, page down. Oh my goodness, my baby is super mad. There. Um, you know, this is what you're going to start off with. So that's importing. You can, of course, make this bigger. Same idea. But the great thing about this is you can do some slightly tracing if you need to do things. I'm not going to belabor the point because that's silly. So where this gets powerful is now you can import some of your PDFs. When <sighs> I have to go dig through a bajillion things to get to, and I am so sorry. It's the pattern now, y'all zero, because that's the one that's the A0 paper. Um, it's going to ask you all these settings. Just leave it as is. Marta again covers this completely. I uh, just wanted to make it all complete so you can watch the half an hour video of me talking. So because I add on a um, black background so it's easier for contrast if you have uh, a dark fabric or whatnot, you're going to have to unpackage this. So I press Control G to un I'm sorry Shift Control G to ungroup everything, or you can of course go to uh, Object and ungroup, which you can't see because delete. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we're gonna zoom in, and you can see the sizes. They're not on different layers. <laughs> They're all on the same layer, right? Layer two. So um, that might be a little bit hard, but they're all grouped together. You see all the pieces. I'm pointing at it, you can't see. Uh, but these these pieces are is like the smallest piece, for example. When I click on that, so you could conceivably move every single one of these group blocks over. Um, it's kind of a pain in the butt. <laughs> so you can see all these. This is my newborn. So again, you can right click. I don't know if this is showing up for you, but I am. And move to layer, and then move to the layer. Unfortunately, in this case, you have to create the layer first before you can move it over. But these are all the pieces. 
And that's how you can do the manipulation. Almost all the pieces, that one's missing, this line here. Um, so that's just the basics. If you want to type notes, you can go ahead and type notes here to yourself using A. It's click and drag. You can change the font uh, and the height. Um, again, it's not going to save it. Uh, sorry, it's not going to display it as a PDF or print if you don't put it in the bounds of the paper. And that's about all you need to really know. So 35 minutes, not too bad. Um, took me a couple of months to learn this. But uh, if you have any questions, it's just look up Kathleen Hutch with a C. Or you can, of course, look in the group for Inkscape. Just search Inkscape. And then I also have a shortcut uh, primer in the group files. So please go look for that. Thank you.